Good afternoon. Is it afternoon? Yeah, it is. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for inviting me to Edmonton. It's my first time in Edmonton. <laughs> we, uh, my wife and I, because of our own Flash of Legends, moved to Vancouver about three years ago. Uh, and I've almost got my Canadian residency. Yeah. Very excited about that. Uh, but thanks for inviting me here today. It was such short notice, but uh, it really is it's wonderful to be here. And I met some really fantastic yeah, people already today. So. Thank you so much for, for being so gracious, and I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. So, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it or what we can say, but I know, uh, speaking of Vancouver, they're shooting a little film uh, called Sonic the Hedgehog. Are you, are you allowed to uh, elaborate in any way? I'm not allowed to say too much, but uh, filming with Jim Carrey was uh, one of the most interesting, insane, fantastic moments of my life. I mean, another Canadian boy. There we go. But it, Sonic was really fantastic to be part of. Uh, my kids were like, Dad, and we always play bad guys. And we can't really watch a lot of your films on TV. Can you do it? So I try to do, every once in a while, I try to do one for them. You know, Mall Cop was always was completely geared towards my kids and making them happy. And Sonic is, is one of them. And uh, I'm, I'm just blessed to, to, to be able to have the opportunity to do all these movies and TV shows, that's for sure. And you've done so many great things in television and film. So say, say there's somebody here who's kind of who wandered in from the halls and they've never seen any of your work and they want to start. Where, what's the first thing they should probably watch to, to get a good feel of, of, of Neil McDonough? Where, where do you think they should start? What do you guys think? Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers. I, I would have to agree. Um, is anybody here in the service or military, first of all? Right here. Thank you for your service. Thank you everybody for your service who's been in the military. Thank you. God bless everyone. Because without them, we certainly wouldn't have the freedoms that we all have to this day. So, you know, it's incredible what these men and women do, how they put their lives on the line for all of us. And, uh, I, to, to be able to portray Buck Compton, who was, who became like another father figure to me, uh, I, I can't tell you what I did to my life. You know, I met my wife for a and Band of Brothers. You know, all the guys, you know, in a couple of weeks we're all getting together. Every six months or so we all get together, which uh, there's no other show I've ever been part of or anyone that I've heard of that spends this much time with a cast. And that was, you know, 18 years ago. Uh, so it, it was really a great time for me. So Band of Brothers it was, it was definitely, uh, I would have to say, my favorite thing that I've ever been part of. I love playing all these other characters. It's like saying, who's your favorite kid? I don't know. I love all my kids. Uh, but there's something about Band of Brothers that, that was different. That being said, uh, Damian Dark, I love the heck out of it. He's delicious, he's naughty, he's fun, and I got to work with John Barrowman all the time. And back on Eric with Stephen Amell. I mean, these guys are, you know, you know, I've said it so many times, who's your favorite actor? I said, if I could act with one actor for the rest of my life, it's John Barrowman. He keeps it light, he keeps it funny, and I love the shit out of that guy. I really do. I was actually recently uh, with James Badgefield. How much was it? How much was it? You guys can sit up there. I was recently with uh, with James Badgefield, who of course was on the Pacific, and he was telling me he was down in Montana shooting a film, and he had a, a, a Marine come up to him and, and just tell him how important that movie or the show was for him and what and what it's done for him. Uh, have you had any similar experiences? Uh, you know, have have a lot of you know servicemen and women come up to you and and, and, and said similar things? Yeah, that, that's you know, even even today. You know, I'll, I'll see, you know, some servicemen, machine guns, very dead serious face, and they'll see me and then they'll just kind of break down because a lot of these times when they're in Afghanistan or wherever they are, they're spending so much time watching Band of Brothers because that's what they were doing on their free time. So for a lot of the men and women who have served, that helped them get through certain situations. And for me, you know, it's like me coming here to these, these conventions. It's so humbling for me that you guys show up to these things. You know, here, here's a kid from small town Massachusetts, you know, who loved his comic books as a kid, and for some reason God was so good to me to give me the career that I've had to play Buck Compton, to play Dum Dum Dugan, to play, you know, all these great fun characters in the military, and then they can play all this other stuff, but it's the military stuff. Uh, I told someone earlier, my dad was from Ireland, came over from Ireland in 1947 in Boston, and walked straight into the army office and said, make me an American. I said, sure, I'm going to ship you overseas for five years. He said, no problem. And he did his five years as a sergeant in the army and came back and, and, and well, then I came. <laughs> Good. Um, 
but I, I learned at a young age what it's like to have respect for people and, and to not complain so much. And you know, as a culture in North America, we tend to uh, complain about a lot of stuff. And the great thing about being part of Band of Brothers is these guys went through complete torture and that they have the attitude of let's enjoy this day because who knows if there's a tomorrow really became a part of my psyche and a part of my fiber that I try to give that back to not just my kids and my wife who are the most important things in my life, uh, but also to God because he gave me this life. So, you know, my job as, as a human being is to give all I can back to God because you're all here listening to me talk, so I must be doing something right. So thank you guys and thank you God for being up for me. Does it change it for you as an actor taking on a role like, like you did with Band of Brothers, knowing that you know this this means so much to so many people, and, it, and, and you know the, the subject matter here is a little more serious than say some of the other you know, things that you've. That you've yeah, done. You, you know it's funny. Everyone says you're such a good bad guy. Thank you. I do enjoy it. Uh, and the bad guys for me are kind of easy because I went up to Los Angeles to be a comedian, and immediately they're like, "You don't look funny." or athletes or, or those kinds of things. And then when I did Walking Tall, has everybody seen Walking Tall here? Yeah! yeah. Thank you. Uh, I auditioned, went into audition for Walking Tall, but I thought I was going into audition for the Johnny Knoxville part as the comedian. They're like, no, we want you to play the villain. I'm like, what? I've never really played the villain. I played I kind of got bored of it in, in Star Trek, but I've never really played a villain. Uh, and I remember sitting there, sitting next to my wife, Ruvay, and The Rock during the premiere, and I was like, oh boy, I'm really good at being the villain. And, it, and for me, it's so much fun you know, to play Damien, to play any of these characters that I've had the chance to play. It is so much fun. And at the end of the day, I can just slough it off and, you know, and it's, you know, become dad or become husband or whatever. And I don't bring my work home with me. It's when I play guys like Buck Compton or guys who are, you know, real life characters who are good guys who have emotional stuff going on with them. Those are the hardest ones for me to kind of slough off. Uh, so. It's, you know, I'm lucky. I get to do good guys, bad guys, TV, films, commercials, Marvel, DC, Star Trek. The only thing I haven't done is, is Star Wars, so let's say some prayers under that one. Next. So I can get them all. I was going to say, what's left on your list? So it's going to be Star Wars? Yeah, that, that's Star Wars, the only one. So hopefully next year I'll come back here and say, guys, I did it. I'm in Star Wars. That would be cool. Uh, now, of course, your work with Suits, too, another uh, great TV show, and you've been spending a lot more time in Canada with that. Uh, did you find this get bombarded with Meghan Markle questions now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but then, again, it's pretty awesome. You it's know, pretty and, cool. You know, and to be part of the Suits, I'm going back to Suits next week. Uh, we took a couple of years off because of Arrow, Flash, and Legends, and uh, so now it's time to go back to Suits, and I'm really looking forward to going back, and, you know, me and Gabriel, we have a great time working against each other, and it, it's, it, it's a great group, and again, you know, you know, when I come to these things, it, it's really, I see all the different pictures on the table that I'm signing, like, oh my gosh, I forgot I was in that. Look, where, look, look at all the things I've done over these years, and uh, it's, it's been such a blessing, and, and, and it's, it's so much fun. And again, thank you guys for just even being here. It's, it's really fantastic. Woo! Working on a show like Suits, do you get to keep the suits? Do you, do you get uh, this is a Damien Dark jacket. Uh, these boots came from Rogue, a series I did. These are Damien's pants. Wow. I think it's a Damien shirt, too. Uh, there's one thing I, I do in my contracts that if the other one, I just want to keep wardrobe because they make it for my body. So you know, I say, can I keep some stuff so that so they let me? Because as a guy, guys, who likes to shop? <laughs> guys generally aren't good. Unless it's a sporting goods store, I'm really not shopping. I'm not very good at a comic book store. Um, so yeah, I get to keep my clothes. It's amazing. That's pretty cool. It's a good thing to work in the contracts. I mean, people forget about that. And they, you know, we talked about it yesterday. But all right. Sure. Now we have a bunch of audience questions. I know there's a lot of fans out there. We have a pretty full house today. So we have two aisle mics. If you have a question uh, for Neil, go ahead and, uh, and uh, line up and uh, let's get to some audience questions. All right, over to you. Um, hello. Hi. Uh, thank you for coming out to Edmonton. Uh, I was just wondering if you have any advice for new and aspiring filmmakers to get into the industry. Uh, it's the hardest industry on the planet. And we're just starting with that. So, you know, when I started out, you know, from small town Massachusetts, 
you know, kids I went to high school with, kids I grew up with, they're like, dude, there's no way you're gonna make it in Hollywood. You, 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 this is not gonna happen. And that's where I start. You know, I'm, I'm really good at starting with no's. Because um, I got pretty thick skin. And, and when I first got up to Hollywood, again, it was, it, it was a challenge for the first 10 years of being out there. It was guest stars here and there, or uh, Star Trek was, was a great thing for me, but it was still kind of, it was, I wasn't making a great living until I did Band of Brothers, and then I was off to the races. So the point I'm trying to make is, if you have confidence in your artistic ability, and your artistic ability really is good, you know, it's like, it's, you know, you're a really fine artist, and you've worked your craft really hard, it's confidence. And I say that in any line of business, if you want to be a great plumber, you may be able to do your handiwork really well, but unless you have confidence and people want to hire you, you're not going to get a lot of work. And so for me, it's, it's you know, I, I've been given this God-given talent and I don't want to waste it for God. And that's kind of what always sticks in the back of my head. But it's the confidence that I have to have. And that comes with failing a lot. It comes with getting up on stage and they're not laughing at the jokes or they're not you know, crying when they're supposed to. And, and you learn a lot by being on stage, by putting yourself in front of everyone and allowing yourself to fail. Uh, so for me, I always tell young artists or older artists, if you've really got a great talent and if you really believe in yourself, nothing can stop you but you. So keep doing what you're doing. Love, love, love what you're doing. But most importantly, love the life that you have and, and great things will happen. Thank you. My name is Thanks. And hire me when you're directing. Make sure you're directing. <laughs> All right, over to this side. Uh, what was it like getting to explore David as a character across two different shows between Arrow and through the last couple seasons of Legends? That's a very good question. Uh, Arrow and Legends were, were two totally different beasts. Uh, I loved Arrow. I loved working with Stephen. Uh, Stephen Amell is a freak of nature. That, that he, I mean, you've seen his workout videos. Are you kidding me? I mean, and this is after shooting for 15, 16, 17 hours a day. And then he'd go off and do his weights for a couple hours. And then he, he, he's that guy. Uh, but, but Arrow is a much more serious show in tone. It, it, was, it was really just a, a darker show. And, and I loved it. I had a great time being part of it. That being said, to jump to Legends, and have the Legion of Doom surface. There wasn't many things in life more fun than that. You know, you know, with Matthew and with John, the three of us were like the three amigos or the three stooges or however you want to look at it, but it was so hard to get our work done because we just made jokes all the time where John would go off and sing a song. John, it's the middle of rain, come here, since it's raining, can we stop? And no, he's gonna dance. You know, or, you know and, and then, then I'll be telling jokes or we'll be singing songs and it was so loose, and you could see that on camera, that our characters were so, you know, engrossed in as we're having so much fun playing those characters. I, I pray one day that the Legion of Doom will have a spin-off series, because that would just be, yeah, it would never be work. It would be, it would be so much fun all day, so uh, who knows? But that, that was a difference, and I love them both, but uh, they were different. Thank you. And being a part of the, the universe, the DC universe, do you are you are you somebody who likes to you know kind of get in more into it and like do you read the comics now or are you kind of doing some research so you can kind of you know handle some of these questions about the characters or the, the great I'm, I'm FaceTiming my wife. Uh, the great thing about Damien is that there really wasn't a whole lot of backstory, so we could kind of do anything we felt like doing with the character and make him as outlandish or as crazy or as human. Like when we did it, when we finally got to. To legends, to, to really, you know, we, we, we struck on having a wife in, in Arrow, which is great, and they named it after my real wife, Reve, which is really kind of awesome, whom I'm trying to call right now. Um, and and that, that was really, that was fantastic, but it was the human side that I loved so much about jumping into uh, to, to, to legends. So, but like, going back, I know with a lot of these characters, there is so oh, much yeah, research so that goes so into there was, it. There was, there, was, there was no real backstory to Danny yeah, yeah. Dark. He was a teeny little character, and they plucked it out, so. Um, so it, for me, it was so freeing as an artist that I could do anything I want, as big as I want, as long as I believed it, and, and, and it was it was great fun playing. And I, you know, I'll go back in short and, and revisit Damien, but right now I've got my new TV series. Thank you. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm doing a new TV series which comes out this winter called Blue Book, which is kind of like yeah, thank you. 
I don't know, someone took a turn. Um, it's kind of uh, like X-Files in the 50s type of feeling. Uh, and it was so much fun. And Robert Zemeckis, who did the Back to the Future movies and Forrest Gump and such, he's the, he's the producer on it. So that's pretty fantastic. And Yellowstone, the new series I'm doing now with Kevin Costner, um, you know, modern day Western. Those are keeping me busy right now. So I, I hope at some point we can go back and revisit Damien and he can just have you know, one last chance at, at probably getting back to Steven. You know, I think that would be fun. There's got to be, I mean, there's got to be a rematch between the Arrow and Damien Dark. There has to be. And we all know how it's going to end this time. <laughs> no, he kicked my butt. <laughs> all right, let's go back to the audience. So let's go over uh, on this side. <coughs> Flying through the air with the harness was pretty amazing. Uh, but my first day, which wasn't a, I, I actually told somebody earlier, uh, they said, your first day, your call time tomorrow is at noon. I'm like, great, do you mind if I come in early? I'd like to sit on the Enterprise and just kind of take it in and, and just, you know, really be part of it for a while. I'm like, yeah, sure. How much really? early? want to come in, like 50 minutes or half an hour? I said, no, I'd like to come in, like, is three hours too much? I said, yeah, the only person there is a janitor, but fun. So I go in there, and there's me on the Enterprise, sitting in the ship, faking the movements, pretending that I'm everybody, I'm Shatner, I'm running around, and literally, I was running around being Shatner, when behind me I hear, you must be Mr. Hawk. <laughs> Bright red. Patrick Stewart standing right behind me. My go, go. Hi, Mr. Stewart, I'm Neil McDonough. Yes, I know, I saw you acting for the last ten minutes. I'm like, no, no! Uh, so that was my favorite that I did in Star Trek would be completely embarrassed in front of Patrick Stewart, but he said my Kirk was pretty good. Um, but the, to, to work with those guys, you know, Jonathan's unbelievable, you know, what, not just what a great director as he is, what a great actor as he is, but what a great human being he is, and I learned so much. That was my first really big film. You know, Angel's Nail film was pretty awesome too. But Star Trek was, uh, that was really amazing. You know, I saw Brent earlier, I haven't seen Brent in a while, and, and it, it was, that was a magical time in my life, and, and, and uh, yeah, I, I really, hopefully at some point, I don't know how they'll do it, how they get Lieutenant Hawk to, you know, assimilate to something where you can come back and, and revisit it, because I would love to come back to Star Trek again, that way, it was, it was an awesome time. Thank you for that question. Thank you. All right. Have a second. I have been a huge fan for a long time. Thank you. Um, my question is a little, uh, deep and obscure. A long time ago, you played one of the victims of the cult leader, David Koresh, and um, I was wondering for you, your viewpoint as a performer, what it was like to show up at the set in the morning and the guy's alive, and you come back from lunch and the guy is gone under horrific circumstances. Uh, it was it was crazy. It was uh, Ambush at Waco. It was one of my first things I ever did back in 93, I think. Um, and we started doing the movie of the week, and there was no ending yet. And they were thinking, when we started filming, no one really knew how it was going to end, what was going to happen, because it was just a big standoff. Uh, and then about a quarter of the way through filming, we found out what happened, and that you know we know what, obviously now know what David Koresh did and what happened to everyone there. And it was shocking. I mean, it was really just, it was shocking to to be part of, you know. That at that time, and it was a very bizarre thing to be part of. You know, I saw Tim Daly not too long ago, and we were talking about it. And for Tim, it was really incredibly shifting in so many things that he, you know, in his life, acting-wise, being a human being, you know, what it, what it meant to America, what was going on right now, and then in Waco, and it was it was a really horrific thing that went that happened. And, and hopefully, you know, we made a movie that made people think, okay, let's prevent this from happening again. It was a really horrific thing to happen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back in front of the side. What was your favorite blooper from one of the things that you've done? Favorite blooper? Well, that will always involve John Barrett. <laughs> always. Uh, bloopers. I'm not much of a blooper guy. I'm gonna have to think about that one and come back to it because I have to really, because when I act, when, when I go to a set, I'm pretty darn serious. Um, so, and 
coming from such a big sports background that I had, when I show up to set, it's really, I, I, it's like the seventh game of the World Series for me. And it's always, I'm here to do my job and be prepared the best that I can. So I don't really don't make a whole lot of mistakes, which is really where you get all the bloopers from. And let me think about that one. I think the best move was probably you know, in front of Patrick Stewart, like, fool of myself. Um, let me think about that. It's a good question. What, what is your process to get in that mindset? If you are, you know, you're arriving on set, how do you kind of get into the character? Do you have like a routine that you like to go through in the yeah, morning? Or? Yeah, it's, it's kind of, not so much that, it's my dad always told me that if someone gives you a dollar, give them two dollars worth of effort. So I've, I've always prided myself on working really, really, really hard on everything that I do. And because I know there's, you know, a billion people out there that would love to have my job and be in my position. So when it comes to being on a set, I don't I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to let the team down. I want to kick butt for everyone and make sure that each day is goes as great as humanly possible. So I think I'm the anti blooper reel. You know, they're, 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 I don't, and that's and it's worked for me so far. You know, 25, 30 years into doing this, it's it, it's it's been really a blessing to, to be where I am, standing here in front of you all, and, and, and uh, again, thank you for being here, because it's very humbling for me. How about, how about the other side of it? So now you leave set, and you're in that mindset, and you got to now on, you know, you know, let loose, and kind of get back into normal life. Do you do, you do anything to kind of get, get out of well, that? Well, you know, at work, I'm generally the very serious bad guy, or the over-the-top bad guy, but generally bad guy. Or very torn good guy. So. When I get home, you know, my kids think it's funny that I'm a bad guy. And I'll try to do the bag in the Damien Dark face and <laughs> Dad, it doesn't work with us. You know, because I'm a really goofy guy by nature, and at home I'm really the goofy dad. If someone's crying or someone's upset, I'll do something really silly to make everyone stop being upset about something. You know, and so in, in life, my persona in life is vastly different from my persona on, in movies and television. And, and, you know, I'm kind of a, a, a shy guy by nature, and, you know, a kind of a, you know, a God-fearing Christian guy, so it's, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm different from most all people, I guess, because, you know, uh, I, yeah, that's, that's kind of me, that's, you know, God first, me second. So, all right, let's go back to the audience, let's go over to this. Sorry, one thing, my, my, I just told my wife, she said she's on the diaphragm, I've never seen it before. My question is, how long did it take to become a board? <laughs> Somebody asked me that a little while ago. It was, nowadays it would probably take about an, an hour to do it, but back then it was six, seven hours of getting the makeup on the face. And everyone said, wow, that must be brutal. Like, are, I'm being borgified. I'm, I'm in Star Trek. This is awesome. <laughs> you know, so for me, it was like, take your time. I'm not going anywhere. I'm the luckiest guy on the planet to be sitting here where I am. Um, and you know, a funny story, when we fit it, uh, when they finished, they uh, they gave me my flight suit, which was completely against the law. Everything is cataloged, everything has to go back to everything, and they gave me my flight suit. So I went to my first convention, and it was my last convention. I hadn't done one for almost 20 years. It was in North Dakota. I said, you know what? I'm going to wear the flight suit to the convention. And that was a mistake. It was, you know, a room three times as big as this, and I walked out, and and people just rushed the stage. They just wanted to grab the uniform. And it was it was really amazing at one time, at one point, but the other point I was like, this is probably not the smartest thing in the world. But it was it was awesome that you know that I got to be part of Star Trek. You know, not a lot of people can say that. And uh, it, it was it was one of the greatest times of my life. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot. Over to this side. Let's go 
you know, play some sports, or let's go do something different. They cut to all those years later, and you know, here I am. Um, but here, I remember sitting in my, my cousin's, we had this little attic, and all the comic books would sit there, and I'd always gravitate towards the Captain America comic books. And then when they asked me to play Dum Dum Dugan, it was like, wow, how did it all come full circle? How did I, how did I get from that little chubby little freckled kid to becoming Dum Dum Dugan? And then, and then it was, you know, I must have gained, I can't tell you, I was telling somebody earlier, I'd wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and devour a chocolate cake, or steaks, or just eat so much, and I was, I'm 180 pounds now, I was 200, two and a quarter, you know, doing, doing that, so to play dumb, dumb, lifting weights and eating food all day long was awesome too. <laughs> and the, the only thing that my wife hated was the mustache, she couldn't stand the mustache, uh, she wouldn't come near me with the mustache, um, and I don't blame her, she's like, is that, is that breakfast in your mustache? <laughs> yeah, uh, but to play dumb, dumb, dumb was, it was, uh, that was really, that was an awesome time. And those guys, Chris Evans is just, it defies logic how cool that guy is, and, and he's just one of the greatest guys to hang out with, and Sebastian and everyone, it was, it was, it was a great time to be part of that, for sure. Thank you. The, the mustache was all you? Yeah, it was all me. So when you're on, on set, you, you take a break and you leave set, that thing goes it, with you everywhere? Everywhere. The egg, it's everywhere. the chicken, everything goes with you. It was like, but it was, I loved it. It was for my kids used to hang on <laughs> <laughs> All right, over to you. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming to Edmonton. It's really cool that you're here. Um, my question is, what is maybe the funniest or craziest adventure that you've had with John Barrowman that you're allowed to tell? Every day. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny when, when, you, when you're acting in movies and TV shows. You, you know, you're there 13, 14, 15, 17 hours a day, and you pray that you get to act with people are like you, who are driven, and really get the job done, and never miss their marks, always send their lines right, always get it going, and also hope that that person between takes is fun, too. John Merriman is the poster boy for being professional and being fun, and keeping the crews light in. You know, it was, you know, he, you know, I, I, he is such an amazing talent, but even a better human being, and uh, it, it was just a blessing to hang out with John for those couple of years. I, I do hope we get to do it again soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have time for a couple more questions, so let's go over to you, Mr. Iron Man. I was just wondering if you could play any other Arrowverse character, which one would it be? Like, would it be Thor, would it be Hulk? That's a good question. I don't you know. I adore Amy Dark. I love every single bit about him. Uh, to, to play. Someone else. I, I guess it would probably be. I, I guess it would be the arrow. I would think, you know, because you know everything that he kind of stands for. I really love and admire, and, and I, I try to live by the same kind of code. If that makes sense, I try not to live by the Damian Dark code in real life. Get in a little trouble. Um, except for the second half of last year, which was you know becoming the goofy dad, which was so much fun. Um, but yeah, those are probably my two favorite characters in the whole Arrow universe. And, but Stephen Amell is, is, he's phenomenal, and uh, I, I look up to Stephen quite a bit, he's, he's fantastic. But those are my two favorite characters in the Arrow universe. Thank you. 